Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now shifting our focus to the Occupy Lekki Togate protest. It occurred on Saturday, the 13th of February, 2021. We saw over 40 protesters arrested and uh, obviously they were eventually released on bail, you know, the sum of 100,000 Naira. And reacting to this, the Lagos State Governor, Son Wodu, has ordered a probe into the arrest and assault of protesters. He said he is very unhappy with how protesters were treated on Saturday. And we've invited human rights lawyer Kabil Adibolu to discuss this with us. Good morning, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure for having me on the program. All right, what are your thoughts on uh, Son Olu's statement that he's unhappy with how protesters were treated? Well, uh, let me say uh, it's one of the, it's a good way to, to start or to, to go about it. But then I, I think the, 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 the the harm has been done already, but then it's a way to to at least heal the wounds of the of the pain that have been, uh, you know, uh, meted out to people. The maltreatment, uh, the the harassment, the torture, the pain that was inflicted on the people or the injury. You know, with, with this kind of statement, at least uh, it will go a long way to assuaging the feeling of the people. However. Uh, a note of warning should also be sound to, to, to the policemen and other security agents that are involved in this kind of thing to ensure that uh, to, to be educated and be informed that the fact that somebody is uh, protesting does not make him, uh, you know, an offender or a criminal. It's, there is no offense committed by somebody staging a peaceful protest. However, there are some other things that needed to be that needs to be uh, that need to, to, to be addressed on the issue of uh, the toge stop. Actually, the toge is a meeting point for the uh, for the people at the time of NSAS protest. However, the toge was shut down was not shut down by another court. It was shut down because the whole place was burned. You know, and it cannot it couldn't function and it cannot still function. Now, for the tribunal of inquiry or the panel. To not give another to open it. Why you have not you are not the one that gave another to close it is highly ultravirus and um, out of the jurisdiction of the panel of inquiry. They have no such power to make an order to open the, the toll gate because they didn't make order to close it in the first place. So why should they now make another? And again, the panel of inquiry was there. To, to sit and make his recommendation. The recommendation ought to come at the end of the entire city, which is six months. So this is one of the problems. But All right. the, um, the recommendation of the governor is a good way to, to go. Um, we're, we're hopefully going to talk a little bit more about the governor. Um, earlier, um, um, Annette Felix had mentioned, um, it seems like, you know, we're, we're, we're walking in circles, you know, because, you know, there's a panel sitting investigating police brutality and then, uh, of course, the governor, at that all through you know the last couple of years, has not been able to in any way control the police or probe any of the or entirely probe uh, police brutality here in Lagos. And so, you know, in what way would this new order be different? But I, I want your thoughts first of all on um, the fact that this is still happening. Does that show that the message really didn't get across to the Nigerian police force? the message that came from the NSARS protest. It wasn't just about ending the special anti-robbery squad. It really was also about police brutality and respect for uh, rights of Nigerian citizens. So, so does the things that happened on Saturday show that the Nigerian police did not in any way learn what that protest was all about? I, I quite agree with you. With what has happened on Saturday, it has also brought to the front burner the fact that our, uh, our policemen do not want, they are not ready to learn the new order that people are preaching. People want a Nigerian police that can be a pride of all. People want a kind of Nigerian police where people can be, can be, you know, can be relaxed, can be guaranteed their safety. Now you have to guarantee the safety of the people. You have to guarantee the, the, the right to life and the security of properties. But with your attitude and character, you are doing the opposite. It's the, the, the actions of the police are highly antithetical to, to, to what people expected or what people are expecting. Uh, people will expect reasonably 
that with the with the Ula Balu uh, of uh, NSAC protest, with the message that was passed, with the lessons that Nigerians have learned, we one would have expected that Nigeria police too would have learned their lesson. But now the way it turned out, it turned out as if uh, it has um, it, they have learned nothing and they were they are not even ready to change because. If we do, we still strip naked the people who are protesting peacefully against an open, passive, official policy of government, then I think we have a lot of problems at our hands that needs to be solved quickly. Mr. Adeguru, looking back at the events of Saturday and even the day before that on Friday, we saw, you know, armed policemen, you know, showing force at the Lekki Togate. They had manned there since Friday, and. Definitely, they were not acting on their own. You know, we, people could argue that they were acting on the orders of the Lagos Commissioner of Police or the Lagos State Government. But, and they did what they did, arrested people, harassed people, subjected them to inhumane treatment. And now the Lagos State Governor is coming out to, to demand a probe of the officers who assaulted the protesters. So lots of people would, would, would say that this could be double-sidedness. That's one. And also, what then is the guarantee that these police officers would be prosecuted or probed if after all the NSAS protest and brutality, nothing has come out from it? Instead, we've been seeing compensation for police officers. So what's the guarantee that, you know, especially for the protesters, that these officers who assaulted them would face the wrath of the law? First of all, I, 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 I will advise the people, the victims of this assault and myriads of uh, maltreatment to, to, to seek redress in a court of laws, you know, for the abuse uh, or infringement on their fundamental right to, right to the dignity of human persons and uh, unlawful torture. Now, if this is done, that is one aspect. And I will also expect the government not only setting up panels, you know, panels have been used to brainwash us in the past and still they are doing it. All the politicians do is to just set up a panel so that people will divert attention from the real thing that is happening, that are happening, so that they can focus on the panel. Now, if you set up a panel and the company comes up with the recommendation, you have the right to all the leave the only parties in this world to say you are not accepting the recommendation. The time to act is now. Let it be at least. There are, there, there are evidence, there are a lot of evidence about where we, we see the policemen, we know them, we know the culprits, you don't need to be doing all sorts of unnecessary investigations, we know them. Get them arrested or get them to, 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 to face the music, let them face them. That's what they call the room trial in Nigeria police to, to discipline any police officer, there is what they, you know, which is similar to what they call Otmatia in the Nigerian army. Now, let them go through all this and let the media justice be passed so that Nigerians can be sure that the government is serious about all these things. And again, let me, let me sound it now. It is not possible for any police officer to go out and do, to go out and do all sorts of, of, of things, all these kind of things, without the, 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 the a tacit or a, an express uh, directive from the commissioner of police. Uh, who, on, who, on, who, on whose authority were the police at the target in the first place? And what are their rules of engagement for any action, for, for any operation that is to be carried out by policemen? There is always um, rules of engagement, the do's and the don'ts. And I am sure they wouldn't have gone beyond those rules if there are no stipulation to the fact that, oh, deal with them ruthlessly. That is not how they would have done that. And one is also for that surprise that the, the commissioner of police who, who visited the scene at the time the, the, the protest was going on and so on and so forth, or just before or just after, he, uh, he was not claiming that he didn't know uh, he didn't know that anybody was arrested or anybody was molested and so on and so forth. This is, uh, I think, un unacceptable, and nobody will believe this kind of uh, you know, okay. obvious Mr. lie because Mr. no Nigerians know that people were arrested and they were All right, Ms. if you're saying that uh, the government or the Lagos CP cannot feign ignorance, you know, of the maltreatment of the protesters, your recommendation then is that the protesters should take this matter to court? Yes, they should go to court. 
against unlawful, uh, you know, or, or, or manhandling, against the torture. You have the right to the dignity of human person under the Nigerian law by Chapter 4 of the Constitution. You understand? How can you strip somebody naked just because he is protesting? The people that are stealing money, what have you done to them? These are innocent Nigerians who are fighting against obnoxious policies, against illegal acts of government, against some other things they perceive to be right, to be wrong. So if they are doing this, they have the right to protect. It is for you to come out as policymakers to say, oh, this thing is not like that. Get them educated, enlighten them, tell them your decision, your intention, and what you want to do, all, 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 all what you, you want to do. If you don't do this, you cannot say you will be pitching somebody or you'll be you'll be you'll be beating somebody and say you should not cry. It is not possible. So I think they should approach the court and claim heavy damages against Nigeria police and against Lagos State government as a, as a body. All right, um, Mr. Debulu, the, the, we, 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 of course, are back to a conversation about police brutality. Uh, the narrative at first was that there was just a few bad eggs in the system. But I'm sure you would agree that while all these atrocities were being committed, the abuse was being committed, there were senior police officers present. There were high-ranking police officers, including uh, the commissioner of police, you know, may have had his eyes on uh, the events that were going on. And nobody stopped any of these things from happening. Um, but there's also something that I, I saw that day, and that is the presence of people called LCC uh, Task Force. They also played a role in arresting and manhandling these protesters. Um, I want your response to that. Um, and, and is it a regular Nigerian character that once you put on a uniform, you immediately feel the authority to abuse and to bully, um, you know, other Nigerians. And, and what you, is the Nigerian police teaching the LCC's task force by letting them get involved with the abuse of innocent protesters? The, the LCC uh, staff or, or what I feel, they are not there. They, they, have not, they don't have the power of the Nigeria the police, uh, the Nigeria police act. Under section 4 of the Nigeria police act, they are to detect, arrest, and prosecute offenders. So what is the role of the LCC uh, group? And again, when you give rights of arrest and, um, you know, uh, dealing with the uh, offenders to any other person, this is the result that you get. If police, if the police, if police men are there, what is the, what can any LCC or any other body do? If, if, if it's not illegally, now with all this, it makes the case worse for the government. Now, they should, and when you look at it very well, whether LCC, um, whether LCC or whatever, whether um, police, whether the army, whether the, whoever that are there on that day, they were there on the directive or authority or permission of the Lagos State government. So with this, they have become an agent of the Lagos State government, and Lagos State government will be responsible for anything they have done. The police cannot be cannot be in that place except the Lagos State Government is aware. Even even if they are given directive from uh, the IG, they must also you know inform the Nigerian uh, the, the, the Lagos State Government, who will also permit it. Now, if they have done that, the Commissioner of Police also will have to give directive before they do all these things. Now, in Nigeria of today, you all this uh, all this kind of uh, paramilitary or, or para uh, police whatever that you have around. They are, most of them are illegal because they do things, they are not, you know, the way it's not supposed to be. Now they are not policemen, they are, some of them, there are no laws establishing them. And some of them even bear arms or, or, or a kind of cloth to man and do citizens. This is not done. We are in right. 21st century, we are in modern democracy, we are not in military rule in Nigeria, where they should treat us as human beings that deserve to also, be treated there properly. Also, they are not known to law. Kabir Adebolu, aside statements of condemnation, what else do you expect Governor Songwolu to do at a time like this, to let the Lagosians know that he, of course, does not in any way approve of the brutalizing of, uh, of protesters, and he truly respects the rights of citizens in Lagos to express themselves uh, peacefully? I tell you very well that the governor, you know, in, in those areas is trying his best. 
you can uh, you can know you will recall that when the exact protest uh, you know started it was the first government in nigeria to go to the to the presidency to say oh, this thing is happening what can we do let us tame this thing on time he brought the he took the far demand of the inside protest protesters to the presidency and the presidency i think approved three of it instantly and the, the other two were approved later so the, and the government also said, I am going to pardon all the people that were arrested. I'm also going to pay certain amount to the people that were victims of this, uh, uh, you know, this inside protest and all that. The governor, as in fairness to him, is doing his best. And also, I have uh, said in another forum that the NSAC protest, it is a protest against federal government agency. It is not a protest against legal state government. So people should distinguish between these two as not to run part of the law. Now, Toget is just a, a meeting point. Toget has nothing to do with Elsa. So don't make it look, they shouldn't make it look like uh, Toget is the real thing that you are now fighting. You are fighting bad policy, you are fighting and the uh, uh, brutality of policemen, but it's not, it's not Lagos State government you are fighting, it's not Lagos State government you are fighting. The government is doing its best, I want to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Kabir Adikbulu, for your thoughts, uh, human rights lawyer. Thanks for coming on The Breakfast this morning. It's a pleasure, always. Ooh, so Sorry. now the LCC is saying that reopening of the toll gates will not hold for many months because of the damage done. So, yes, it seems that even though the Lagos panel had said, uh, you know, the LCC can repossess the, the toll gates, but the LCC is now saying that because of just how much damage has been done, that might not happen. It's pretty obvious. I mean, I, I, I know that the day after the um, order was given or the ruling was given, uh, the next day I saw uh, staff of the LCC, I'm, I'm not sure, top management staff, I believe, um, where, you know, doing a tour around it. So it, it, saying that it's not going to open for many months because of the damage, that's, that's, that's not yes, new. Everybody obviously lots very, of repairs would need yes, to be obviously. done. Yes, obviously. Um, but the conversation doesn't also stop, you know, because the reason, you know, people are, or people went there, I believe, is because they shouldn't in any way be even be talking about, about reopening. reopening or, you know, retaking possession until there is some level of justice to those who, um, you know, have suffered in the hands of police brutality. And that, unfortunately, is the spot that would always be remembered as the uh, location where a lot of those things, um, you know, happened. Yes. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, people who also suffered injustice. Lives were lost in the build-up to the protest that we're not even talking about today. The focus really has now shifted to the toll gate. But let's also not forget that people were killed before Indeed. the protest itself that haven't gotten justice. People were killed years ago, even, that still are seeking justice. Um, and so we, we, it, it's something that we should always continue to talk about. That's yes, all we have indeed. for you on The Breakfast this morning. It's been a pretty interesting uh, Tuesday morning. We want to wish you a great day ahead. If you missed out on any of these conversations from... Um, Ngozi Okonjo Wella, congratulations to her once again. To, of course, uh, the doors here for, for, by, uh, to NAFDAQ from uh, uh, Vaccine Makers. And, of course, to the Lekki Tollgate. You can catch up on any of these on um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Plus TV Africa. Same with our YouTube channel. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for staying here with us on the breakfast from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning. Let's do this again tomorrow. Have a great day.